All right, welcome to Learning Plan 6. This is all about communication and collaboration, teamwork, working together, but primarily communication. We're going to be talking about um, effective communication, um, cultural diversities, the types of um, personalities, uh, how to work in a group. We're going to be talking uh, about uh, different personality, personality styles, SBAR communication, and conflict management, just to give you a heads up. Uh, so let's dig right into it right away. Uh, communication. Well, well, first off, what is communication? And communication is um, when there is there needs to be two two people involved: the person sending a message, the person receiving the message and the message. Without those three components, you don't have communication. Now, and just because there are two people involved does not mean you have true communication. If the listener or the receiver is not listening, does not get the message, there has been no communication. Classic example of, think of um, your significant other, you tell them to do something, you think you've sent the message, but the person on the receiving end for one reason or another, do not get it. So truly, there was no communication. That doesn't absolve anybody of that, but that, that is the fact that when the receiver does not get the message, or if the sender sends a garbled message, there's no communication. So it, it's, a, it's an interaction between two or more people. You need to have a clear message, and that's evidenced by that clear crystal ball. Make sure your message is clear. Use simple, precise words. The old uh, phrase, kiss, keep it simple. I don't like the word simple and stupid. I prefer keep it simple and slow. Feedback. Did, did you receive feedback? If you did not receive feedback, there's a good chance your message was not received. So ask for feedback. What's a good question for feedback? It's very simply. Tell me what you understood that I asked of you. Or can you show me how you're going to accomplish what you are doing? And by the way, sidebar, um, in our new apartment, I do not have my really cool um, recording studio like I had in the earlier ones. So uh, my dog is around, my son is around. So that's real life. So we may have some communication among ourselves at very, very different levels. Anyway, back to the lecture. Are there any nonverbals? That's evidenced by the by the by the manager person standing with his arms crossed. That's a nonverbal communication. Nonverbal is more powerful than verbal. You can send a really positive verbal message, but if you're standing like this, the whole tone has changed. Do you have credibility? See, if you don't have credibility when you're passing out your message, chances are nobody will believe it. And we talked about this in last lecture about uh, students having informational power. But if you don't believe you have informational power, it, your message will be lost. Make sure you acknowledge the feelings of others. If you give out information that could be emotionally charged, Acknowledge those feelings. Communicate in the present. Try to try to give your messages now and with a sense of a timeliness. Try to limit personal feelings from contaminating your communi communication. And granted, that's really hard because our personality is so much of us. But try to limit your personal personal uh, values when you communicate, and be respectful of your surroundings. If you're giving negative feedback, do it, hopefully, away from everyone else. And sometimes even positive feedback can be very hard for people to receive. Um, students, I'm going to generalize here, but some students, well, most students, have a very hard time receiving compliments. Positive feedback can be embarrassing for the person to receive. So keep that in mind when you're giving feedback. So how can you communicate with your supervisor or 
or your or your teacher or your the doctor well one thing is just effective communication is an ongoing process keep everyone informed as you go along rather than giving a report at the end of your shift work throughout the shift keep people updated focus on problem solving if you have a problem with you know me or your supervisor or your shift leader or whoever don't just bring the problem bring a potential solution now that does not mean the solution will be used but it shows that you are not just pointing out a problem but you are finding a way around it that's powerful that's assertive Show a sense of responsibility in what you're doing and don't blame others, even if others might be part of the problem. Accept your responsibility for your actions. Don't respond with anger if someone in authority points out something to you negatively. That never helps the problem. Again, that goes back to keeping your personality, your personal feelings out of your communication. Accept feedback, good and bad. And look, realize that every feedback is given to you only for one reason, to help you learn. When I give good feedback, I want you to learn what you've done good and apply it to other parts of your life. If I give you feedback that is negative, it's because I know that you can do better and you will do better, but only if you know what's going on. And a big thing is if you have a problem with your supervisor or your instructor, <clears throat> Don't go around them to someone else. That is a great way of destroying communication. If you have a problem with your supervisor, go to them first. Talk to them. It will not be an easy conversation, I guarantee you. But if you communicate effectively, keep your emotions out of it, use positive language, and present solutions, it will not be taken as aggressive as it could be. But if you go around them, that will be taken as a very, a very um, passive aggressive um, act and uh, it generally wins nobody any favors or friends. So how do you communicate effectively with other people? Suppose with other nurses. Well professional nurses should view themselves as equals in interactions with other members of the healthcare disciplines. So nurses should be considered equals of respiratory therapists and physical therapists and even pharmacists to a degree. So you, you communicate at their level. It's a lateral communication. Even with physicians, to a large degree, it's a lateral communication. Yes, they give orders. But we are professionals just as they are. We have a different profession with different viewpoints. So communicate, communicating with a physician truly is communication between peers but within different groups. Now how about to CNAs, those that you are, um, that you may supervise? When you need to communicate, get their full attention. Give clear, simple, step-by-step -step instructions. Ask for feedback. You want to make sure that they've heard you, they've heard the message. You must follow up and pri provide direction without being too harsh. Think about when you have been provided direction and it's done in an overwhelming manner. It doesn't help. So when you provide direction to your, your subordinates, think about how you would like it. How about the non-medical people, neighbors? How do you communicate with them? Well, you're going to talk to them, obviously, at a different level than you would to other nurses or doctors. This is where I'm always reminding my students in the clinical site to keep it simple. Do you realize that the average uh, comprehension level of the average person is fifth grade? That's a 10 year old. That is what most people, when it comes to healthcare or almost anything technical, that's the level that they comprehend. If we go in talking about, we're giving you uh, Lovenox as a DVT prophylaxis to prevent DVTs and PEs, we've lost them. There has been no communication. They have no clue what you just said. So we need to make sure we keep things simple. 
Remember, that's one of the other ba basic principles. How about the family members? A lot of times, dealing with family members, we have to keep it at that 10-year-old ten, level or even lower, especially if it's a family member of our patient. If they're under stress, if they're worried, if they're scared, if they're angry, their uh, level of comprehension is even lower. Media? How do we talk to the media? We don't. Just that simple. If somebody in the media comes up to you and wants to know what's going on, you refer them to your supervisor or to the media specialist, you're not going to you're not going to give information out. That is a great way of causing problems. So, what does communication say about your personal image? <clears throat> Communication enhances your credibility. If you can talk clearly, with good eye contact, calmly, and make sure that your point is heard, your credibility goes up. But if you're talking like this, and uh, yeah. when you talk to somebody, you're, you're just you know, reading off this, and do you believe that person? Do they know what they're talking about? No, they, they may not. Now that's not to say reading information is wrong, but you need to do it in a way that demonstrates that you still know what's going on. What are some other parts of communication that can affect your personal image? Well, is your uniform clean and unwrinkled? We've all seen the employees, even the students sometimes, show up with wrinkled, wrinkled uniforms. What does that say? That they're too busy. Sure, I get that. Uh, but it also could say that they just didn't take the time to take care of things. And if you don't take time to take care of your uniform or your equipment, what does that imply about what you may be doing with other parts of your professional life? Know your particular kind of nursing thoroughly. By training and by experience, I'm a cardiac and critical care and emergency nurse. I know those areas, I know this part of the body really well. The rest of the part of the body, not as much. That does not make me a bad nurse. It makes me a specialist. So you need to make sure that your specialty, you understand. If you're women's health, you know women's health issues forward and back. If you're a pediatric nurse, you know children. If you're mental health, these are all different areas. Know your specialty. But be flexible. Understand flexibility in communication and in practice is the key to success. So know your area, but be willing to learn something else. And be pleasant. Try to be happy on the job. Try to be pleasant to your patients, your family members, your coworkers. Because we all work with that one person, or maybe more than one person, who's not pleasant, who basically makes life miserable. Don't do that. Now, how do gender differences affect communication other than hugely? In this, in this class, we have three students and me. We're all guys. We approach things sometimes very differently than women. That's not to say either are wrong, just different. Now, I'm going to make some generalizations. And I, when we in class, I want I want some feedback on these generalizations because I might be wrong. Women women uh, tend to focus on the the issue, what's at hand. They tend to be um, nurturing, um, sometimes not as comfortable asking questions. They use a softer, quieter approach frequently. They can be less overtly competitive and less aggressive when asking questions. Now, again, these are generalizations, but I think they're generally accurate. Men tend to be more logical and direct. We don't ask as many questions, but when we do, they're direct, they're focused. Sometimes men can be assertive and assertive to the point of being aggressive. Men can be more team-oriented, but less nurturing. 
men generally gravitate toward more technical fields of nursing. Emergency medicine, critical care, intensive care, cardiac surgery, flight nursing. Those are not necessarily higher level nursing, but they're more technically focused. And many times you, an ICU or CCU will have a very large component of men because it, it appeals to the, in general, the male approach of nursing. So there are multiple intelligences and I hope you brought your completed multiple intelligence quiz to class because we're going to talk about that and how that affects everything. Let's come back for part two.